Today's video is about the five spiritual truths that made me successful. When I first started in business, I had no idea what spirituality was or why should I care. I was consistently focused on hustling, on doing more, on making sure that I was hustling and grinding and doing everything that I thought I needed to do in order to scale my business and being successful. But after a few years, I realized that that hustle was hurting more than was helping. I needed a different way. And after I period in my life, I had this spiritual realization that made me internalize spiritual frameworks that made me finally successful. This video is about the five core spiritual truths that are guaranteed to take you to the next level. Because contrary to what most people believe, peak performance is just not productivity. It's not glorified fitness. It's not even having a strong mental game. All of those things are part of peak performance. But peak performance is when you fire on all cylinders, spiritually, mentally, physically, and of course, executive wise, when everything is aligned towards a definite purpose. At the root, peak performance is deeply spiritual. It implies a connection to something greater than yourself. And if you are trying to perform at your peak just by nailing your exercise routine, you are never going to get there. You need to master everything. And arguably, the most important thing to master is your own spiritual journey. In essence, spirituality is understanding that you have connection to something that is bigger to yourself. It doesn't matter what you believe that to be, but that is a core truth and it has deep practical performance implications. The most important of them is that you are not your mind. And that is truth number one. You are not your mind. You are not your, your mind. Your mind are thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. This is what I call your mind. And you are not your mind. At any moment during the day, according to the latest research, it's like 30, 35,000 thoughts per day, and all of them are automatic. They just pop into your head. Even if I tell you think about a pink elephant, a specific type of pink elephant is going to come into your mind. So at the root, your thoughts are automatic, and so are your emotions, and eventually your behaviors. And if you identify with those automatic thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, you believe them. And therefore, your performance is subject to the content of those thoughts and your emotions. And since these thoughts and your emotions are based on your past programming of how you have um, experienced your life before the present moment, you have no control over the fact of whether they're negative or positive, right? Imagine you were bitten by a dog when you were a kid. Well, you were going to be associating negative thoughts and emotions to every time you see a dog, and that is going to be automatic. If you don't see that you're not your mind, you're gonna believe that bullshit, and you're gonna have a bad day. You're gonna be avoiding those dogs. You're gonna be living a life operating from those mental wounds from the past. Understanding these deep spiritual truths allow you to choose what are the thoughts, the emotions, and events eventually your behavior that you want to display in order to operate at peak performance. If you're a busy entrepreneur, a busy executive trying to scale your career, your business, you need to make effective choices. And those effective choices re require effective behavior that is motivated by effective thoughts and emotions. It cannot be like most people are living this life in which they just wake up and have the shitty emotions. They have all sorts of negative thoughts roaming around. And therefore, as a result, they have a terrible day. This is not the way to live. This is never the path towards peak performance. You have a choice on your thoughts and your emotions because you are not your mind. You are consciousness. Well, let's put it that way. You are awareness. You are the awareness of those thoughts and your emotions. And depending on what specific faith you espouse, that awareness eventually links to spirit, links to chi, links to universal consciousness. It is the Atman and the Brahman. It doesn't matter what you choose to believe. What matters is that you wake up to the fact that you are not your thoughts and your emotions. In psychological terms, 
this will you you will we, we would say that you are the context of your consciousness right not the content the content is the specific thoughts emotions and behaviors you're displaying but you are not the content you're the context when the context or the situation around you changes new thoughts and emotions pop up and that is what makes you a different um a different person because you have a different consciousness right so that is truth number one you are not your mind and therefore you have a choice over what thought emotions and eventually behavior you choose to display this is a core difference between average and elite performers average performers they're subject to the mind if they wake up with the right food they have a good day if they wake up with the wrong food they have a bad day that's it that is not the way to go elite performers always have good days irrespectively of how they feel of the thoughts that they have and if they have terrible thoughts maybe their performance is compromised a bit but they never waste a day average performers can waste a whole week in business if something happened that did not expect so this is truth number one you are not your mind now truth number two and it is a direct consequence of this thought of this first truth is you see you see reality as you are in essence if this is reality and i'm going to be drawing a tree here and this is you let's see how good i am at drawing well let's assume this is a person okay right and you're seeing reality this is reality right and this is you your mind is creating filters you have the thoughts and you have the emotions that are coloring your reality if you see a tree that you've never seen before that you have no meaning associated to that specific tree you're just going to see it for what it is a tree no interest whatsoever but if you see a person that wronged you in the past you're going to start having crazy thoughts and emotions about that person based on how you are interpreting that uh, experience that you had with that person and over time you create this lens that allows you to see the world in a specific manner. Psychologists, specifically Carl Dweck, will, will differentiate between growth and fixed mindset. In essence, is whether you believe that you can evolve and you can grow and you can become better over time or that your cognitive abilities are fixed from birth. And this is a huge, there's a huge correlation between a growth mindset and peak performance but everything hinges on this spiritual truth you see reality as you are not as it is the same reality is interpreted in a different way by different people depending on the lens depending on the con on the mindset and they have developed over time and this is huge for peak performance because then what we gotta be working on and this is what we help our clients do is basically work on the lens what is is the lens that you are having what is the filter that you're using to understand what's going on in your business in your teams in your own personal life what are the things that you're telling yourself and the interpretations that you're making about your life that are keeping you stuck this is why most productivity advice doesn't work because it's not deep enough what matters is that we work at the level of the mind and one step behind at the level of awareness you can try all sorts of apps all sorts of productivity tricks and hacks and you can binge watch productivity youtube that if you have a faulty lens if everything that happens in your life is a, because you know people hate you and everything is terrible and the universe is just going after you and you are poor you're never going to get anywhere no matter how good your productivity could be with all of those hacks it's all about the lens it's all about your interpretation of reality since you are not your mind you can shape a mind that allows you to see reality for what it is over time in fact 
This is one of the core distinctions of elite performers. When you train yourself to remove your cognitive biases over time and look at reality dispassionately, trying to be absolutely critical, you start seeing further into reality than the average performers. Average performers will just interpret things from the get-go. Okay, this is a dog. I got bit by a dog when I was seven. I hate dogs. Dogs are awful. And this is like a very normal reaction if you have a subconscious fear of dogs. Elite performers will work with that, what I call mental wound, in order to over time let it go so they can look at dogs as not a threat. And this in business has a lot of implications. If for whatever reason an employee wronged you years ago and you see the same pattern of behavior in a different employee, you're going to automatically assume that that person is going to wrong you again. But maybe it's just a pattern of behavior that does not reflect the same character. And you need to operate under the assumption that different people may have different motivation. This truly is the crux of peak performance. This is the thing that matters most, shaping that filter, understanding that you have a choice to fine tune the machinery of your mind to help you see your life, the world, and your whole story under a different light. In fact, under the light that makes the most sense for peak performance, which leads me to core truth number three. three. That has to do with your interpretation of time and this one is huge right there's only there's only present no past no past no future this is huge because until you wake up to the fact that you are not your mind, you're constantly buying into every thought. And most of the thoughts of the mind had to do with reviewing the past and trying to foresee the future. And they tend to think about the bad things that happened in the past and the fantastic things that will happen in the future and move you away of the present moment. But there's only present moment. Life is a succession of present moment, one after the other. And if we dwell on the past or we daydream about the future, we're missing out on what really matters, which is the present. And once we move away of the present, we start suffering. We start thinking about what if and if thens and the things that happened in the past, which heart hurts our performance. This is why Elite athletes are always told to just focus on their game and the process, especially on when they are in a competition. If an athlete enters the finals of the Olympics thinking about anything else than the present moment, thinking about the possibility of losing or the, every time they fucked it up in the past, that is going to hurt their performance because their mind is going to move away of the present moment, which is the only thing that actually matters and is the only thing we have control over. We can only control the things that are happening right now. If we want to build a life we're proud of, if we want to scale our business, if we want to perform at our elite level, if we want to build a peak performance life on all fronts, we master it moment by moment, day by day. Trying to foresee the future or dwell on the past is only going to hurt us. And this hinges on this notion that there is only present is the only thing there is is the only thing that is true and it is the only thing that matters every time your mind is trying to move to the past or the future stop it understand that thought and let it go because that thought cannot help you perform in the present moment and performance is the only thing that matters because peak performance leads to peak results. Sheet performance leads to sheet results. And if you don't have the results you want, it's because your performance is not at the level it needs to be for you to get those results. The universe is cause and effect. If you put the right causes into the universe, you will get the results you want. But you must be able to understand how performance affects those results.
So there is only present. There's a fantastic book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle that talks about the power of now, precisely understanding that the only thing that is true and real is the present. Which leads me to truth number four. And this one is a little bit hard to accept, but it really changed the game for me. And it will probably change the game for you. And it is that he who cares the most loses. The mind is constantly running catastrophic scenarios. It has evolved through time to keep us safe, content, and alive. But when trying to perform at our peak, when we're trying to really do our best job and show up at our best, the mind only hurts. Because it's constantly thinking about the outcome. It's constantly thinking about the results. It's constantly moving towards having an attachment towards the result of what we're doing. If we launch a new marketing campaign, it absolutely has to work. Otherwise, we're, we're whatever, or bullshit you tell yourself. It has to work. It absolutely uh, needs to work because I have invested so much time. This hire absolutely needs to perform because I have invested so much time in hiring that person. And that attachment to the outcome is precisely what makes you fail. This is a core truth that is hard to accept, but it really changes the game. I remember a time in my life in which everything was going southwards. Literally, it was going terribly. And I went to see a mentor and the guy told me, literally, you care too much. Let it be, keep working. That was his advice after I outlined every single problem that I was going through and I, I was hustling and grinding and doing all sorts of things to get out of the situation I was in. His um, advice was, you care too much, let it go, let it be. Everything will turn out well. I didn't want to accept that advice, but it turned out to be exactly what I needed to hear. And I said, you know, let go, fuck it. Whatever happened, happens. And you know what happened? That everything started improving because I moved my focus away from the outcome and into the process. The process, remember, is just the present moment. Present moment is, only, is the only thing that we have, is the only thing that exists, and is the only thing we have control over. Which is why mastering the present moment implies focusing on the process. If we move away from the outcome to the process, our performance shoots up because we're focused on the only thing we can control, right? The Stoics will tell you that you should not care about the things you do that you have no control over. Is another way of saying that caring about the outcome is a surefire way of eventually not getting it. Back to this example of the elite athletes in the Olympics. When Usain Bolt gets to the finals of the Olympics, Olympics. The only thing he's focused on is he's nailing the race, nailing every single movement, understanding what needs to happen for him to win. But then let it go of the outcome. Let it go of the need of winning. Just let it flow. Because the more you flow, the more you access a flow state, the better you perform. So this is hard to accept for most people. When we work with entrepreneurs, it really takes them quite a lot of time to wrap their head around that consistently stressing about the finances of their business or team management or lead management, all those sort of things is the wrong way to approach it. I'm not saying you should not care about everything you do. I'm saying you should care about the process and you should let go of the outcome. If you care too much about getting something, most likely you will never get it because such is the nature of performance. And again, if you believe performance is glorified fitness, try to just you know, pump up your fitness and then go into business without understanding these frameworks. It's gonna be absolutely impossible for you. And then finally, and this is really important, this is very wide as a topic, but I'm gonna outline it, is the fact that everything is energy, right? And I'm, I'm not gonna go too woo-woo into it, 
but I'm going to give you a mental model to think about it, right? If, back to this idea, you're not your mind, but your mind has thoughts and emotions, the content of those thoughts and emotions matter, right? If you have negative thoughts and emotions, you have low energy thoughts. This is what some people call it, raise your vibration. Negativity, shame, guilt, all of those negative emotions are low level emotions. The more time you spend in low level emotions, the more you pay attention to those thoughts and emotions that are negative, the harder it is for you to perform. Because nobody performs at its peak when you're feeling like shit, do you? When you really pay attention to the thoughts telling you you're not good enough, this is not gonna work, you suck, all of that bullshit is just not helping you, right? So. It, understanding that those thoughts have energy because they trigger feelings in your body is crucial to understand that the choice you make about the feelings you want to experience eventually drives the energy that you dis, um, deploy in your business. So your responsibility, and this is a responsibility, is to keep yours high, to be the most energetic person in the room by not paying attention to negative thoughts, by not paying attention to guilt, to shame, to all sorts of emotions that keep you stuck in the dark side. And instead, choose positivity, choose courage, choose joy, choose peak performance, choose happiness. You have a choice about the thoughts and emotions and eventually the behaviors that you deploy. And such is the nature of spiritual performance, is understanding that that choice is what is going to drive the outcomes that you want. It's not hustling, it's not grinding, it's not caring too much about the outcome, it's not disregarding your spiritual journey, quite the contrary. It's understanding that you're a spiritual being, that you have a choice over the mind, there's a tool that you can shape to your own liking, and such is the path of elite performers. So these are the five truths that uh, it really changed my life. When I first started in business, I had no idea about this. When I was training people in peak performance, I was doing it from the executive side. So how to make decisions, how to plan, how to create systems, KPIs, all sorts of things, right? And those things work, of course. But I was realizing that there was a, something that was missing, both in them and in myself. And once I had this spiritual realization that I was not the mind, I found it. This is the most important truth for performance. You have a choice over your thoughts and your emotions and your responsibility is to always make the most effective choices about the contents of your consciousness. So you can keep your energy high. So you can choose to feel well. You can choose to have good thoughts. You can choose to display good behaviors. If you want the full framework and how to really learn this very quickly, book a call with us. We'll audit exactly where you are in business and if it makes sense, then we'll work together. In the meantime, think about how can you apply these thoughts in your day today because this really changed the game for me. It is the most important thing that our clients report us, that they learn with us and is warranted to change your life and business. And of course, until next time.